Okay, so see how that wave looks nice? Like the pink one is my input and the yellow is my output. Can you give me a basic explanation on why you think we're showing distortion when the wave looks halfway decent? Yeah, I think when we're looking at the wave on the scope, you know, when we say it looks decent or clean, we, we, we're meaning like it's not clipped or it's not a triangle, you know, it, it resembles a sine wave, but the, there's more frequencies in there than the actual frequency that you're looking for. So what is, is that 40 hertz or 1K? Yeah, I'm doing 40 hertz. Because most people are going to use this for bass. So there's probably like some harmonics mixed in. So there's probably some 80, some 120, some 160, maybe some 200 mixed in there. And it's hard to see because it's not clipped or, or jagged or, or a sawtooth or anything crazy like that. But there's other frequencies other than 40 hertz. That's what the DD1 triggers on. And we can't really see that with our eyes on a scope. But, um, you know, that's how I have like an audio precision, things like that. So I can... I can actually see all that stuff on there. That's what it's useful for. Okay, so we know the audio precision is the real deal, holy field. When this video is done, can I throw them in a box and send them to you and have you put them on the audio precision and maybe go into a little bit more deeper and show us on the screen what you're talking about? Yeah, not Okay. Sure. Okay, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to mail them off to you. I don't want to put you on the spot, but will you make a quick little video about it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, it'll be a lot better explanation than I can do. So. Yeah, yeah, great. It'll, it'll support the DD1 too so people can see what it's doing. Now, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse with these LLC videos. I really didn't even want to do another video. But I sent these off to Tony D. He tested them on his AP. And by the way, Tony D is a real electronics engineer. A real one. One of the best I've ever met in my life. He's not just some guy on YouTube running his mouth and doesn't have any idea what he's talking about. He actually knows what he's talking about. A lot more than I do. So I sent those things off to him. He's testing them. He's going to get us some real results. And if you see this video, if you watch this video and you still have something to say, well, I don't know what else to tell you. Stay miserable, but just watch and learn. And we both agree this video is kind of long and you might fall asleep while you're watching it. But if you care about any of this stuff, especially if you've been running your mouth about my tests and what I've done, then watch this video and you'll see how lame and how stupid some of these comments have been. I mean, it's right there in front of your face. What else do you want? Anyhow, enjoy the video if you're actually able to stay awake or watch it in segments. And thanks for watching. And it's probably the last LLC video I'm going to do for a little while. But I appreciate that you're sticking around. And uh, let's get back to editing. I'm out. All right, we've got the Pack SNI 15 hooked up to the Audio Precision APX 515 Audio Analyzer. Um, my laptop here is uh, monitoring the Audio Precision. I've made a test sequence with some various tests so that I can test all these things exactly the same, starting with this pack piece. And it's going to be automated, so I'm going to push start and it's just going to run all through all these tests and we can go back and talk about the results. Um, but, and the tests that it's going to run through are, first one, frequency response. We're going to put a input of 5 volts into it and we're going to measure the frequency response out. Then we're going to do a 40 hertz step level sweep. So we're going to put 40 hertz into it and we're going to just start turning up the level. Going from 100 millivolts output all the way up to 4 volts of output. And we're going to monitor the distortion during that time. And we're going to do the same thing at one kilohertz. And then we're going to do a five volt input. And a constant five volts of uh, signal input. And then sweeping the frequency from 20 to 20 and looking at the distortion. And then we're going to do the same thing with 20 volts of input. And then we'll do a crosstalk where we have left channel on, right channel off, and right channel on, left channel off. And we measure to see how how much uh, intermingling, if you will, is between the two. Then we'll do a signal to noise test, which is a lot of signal and then no signal, and then the, what the difference is, basically how quiet is it. Then we'll look at the 40 hertz spectrum analysis, which is you're putting in a pure 40 hertz tone, what's actually coming out. And then same thing with 1K, a pure 1K tone, what's actually coming out. Then we're gonna do, um, 10 volts input THD plus N measurement. Just what is the distortion at 40 hertz with 10 volts in? 
And then same thing, what is the distortion at one kilohertz with 10 volts in? And that's it. That's the gamut of tests that I've prepared for, for these things. And we're gonna go ahead and run this one now and go over the results. Here we go. Oh, I'm gonna pop out this scope window too here just so there's something else to look at. All right, here we go. It does not like 40 hertz. It's a very common problem on these passive LOCs. By passive, I mean there's no active electronics inside of them. There's just resistors and transformers. the low frequency problem again. All right, it's finished. So let's look at some of these uh, Results here. There's the frequency response starting at 20 kilohertz on the right. It's very flat. It starts falling off around 40 hertz, starts going down, and by 10 hertz, we're down minus 4.5 dB. It's not terrible. This was done with a 5 volts input. 40 hertz stepped level. So this, these numbers here on the bottom are the output of the LOC. So distortions over here on the left, we got 0.2% distortion from 100 millivolts up to about one volt. After one volt of output, it starts distorting the output. It hits the 1% distortion before two volts. And by two volts, we're at about 3% distortion. So doesn't love 40 hertz. One kilohertz, all the way from 100 millivolts to four volts output. It is under 0.1% THD the whole time. That's good. Here we have uh, a constant five volts in, and then we sweep the frequency from 20K to 20 and look at distortion. So again, confirms the other things at 20 kilohertz and at high frequencies of distortion is relatively low, around 0.1 to 0.2. By the time we get to 50 hertz or so, the distortion starts shooting up. By the time you get to 20 hertz, it's uh, around 4%. That was at 5 volts. This one here is the same test, but at 20 volts of input. Uh, now our distortion is higher at high frequency, up to about 0.3. Kind of dips back down to 0.1. And then at 100 hertz and lower, it starts heading off to the moon. And by 70 hertz, it's already beyond 10% distortion. So completely useless for low frequencies at uh, high levels. Crosstalk, minus 70, minus 73. I mean, this is a relative test, so we're just gonna compare these to the other ones. It's pretty good, those are good numbers. Signal to noise, 96 and 103. Again, this is a passive device, so I don't expect there to be much noise, those are good numbers. They're probably mostly from my test setup. Um, 40 hertz frequency spectrum analysis. So here, this big spike, you guys can see my mouse on, on the camera here. 
the spike here at 40 hertz, so that's the, that's the signal that we're putting in, a pure 40 hertz tone. And then what's coming out of it is 80 hertz, 120 hertz, 160 hertz, 200 hertz, 242, and so on. That's all these other little spikes. Those are the harmonics. Uh, this is with 10 volts in. This is, this is really bad. And basically, this is just another way of looking at the distortion to see what is causing the distortion. So it's all these harmonics here. If it was clipping, it would look almost the same, but you guys saw the scope. It's not, it's not a distortion that's made by clipping. It's a, another uh, action that's causing it. Here's the one kilohertz spectrum. That one you can see is much cleaner. There's the one kilohertz spike. All these other little spikes are 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, and so on. They're all pretty small. Uh, they're about 70 decibels lower than the fundamental. So you can imagine if you had a a tone being played and then there was another tone at 70 de decibels below the first tone you know would you hear it probably not but like back to the 40 hertz one this third harmonic is only about 25 or 30 db lower than the first one so i'm gonna bet you're gonna hear that one all right then on to this test this was the 10 volts in 40 hertz distortion which it's not showing the number so i'm just going to run it again you see it right here so with 10 volts in at 40 hertz we're at about three percent on this channel and 2.6 on this channel can you see it imagine that's your little handheld scope you're probably not seeing it you're like yep looks like a sine wave like a squiggly line can you see it now Maybe, maybe not. Depends how many of these things you've looked at. This is why the DD1 is awesome. The DD1 will see that in a second. There, there, it's really big. Can, hopefully you guys can see it there. There's some funniness here and down here. It's not clipping, but it's 3% distortion. It's terrible. That would sound, uh, that wouldn't sound good. You'd definitely hear that. Okay, and then the same thing at one kilohertz right here. Let's run it. That's nice and clean. Zero, zero. And you can see this. That is what a clean sine wave should look like. All right, that's the uh, Pack S915. Axis. A-X-A-D-C-T-2. This one does have independent uh, level controls on it, so I was able to match the levels. Although the distortions are quite different, channel to channel, but the levels are, are matched. Let's run it. This is the frequency response test. Ooh, let me stop this. I want to pop the scope out. Pop the scope out. Not that much scope. Okay, there's some scope. Let's run it. Frequency response test. Ooh, that didn't look good. 40 hertz stepped level sweep. We're over 1% distortion already. At 400 millivolts of output. Well, anywhere, even at 100 millivolts of output. There's one volt of output. We're starting to go up in distortion now. Two volts of output. See, really hard to see that on this on the scope. It looks pretty normal. We're at 3% distortion right there. I'm telling you guys, you can't see distortion on a scope. I mean, the only reason I have it up right now is for fun. And so I can complain about it. Here is the uh, 5 volts constant output, or, or 5 volts constant input sweep. Again, distortion going up as frequency goes down. Here's the 20 volt version of that test. Yeah, even at high frequencies, we're at 1% distortion on the left channel, and it goes to the moon. You can see their triangle wave on the scope. 
This is the channel separation test. Some signal analysis tests. And the two distortion tests at the end, which we're going to go back and do manually so we can look at them. Let me export these results. two manually so that is uh, 10 volts input 40 Hertz there it is 2.6 percent THD and 2 percent THD let's take a look at it do we see it can we see that 2.6 it's a little pointy right here and it's a little bit leaning this way that's what I see Let's look at the 1K. The distortion on the right channel is good, left channel not so much. Can we see anything? Not really. A little bit, a little roundy again. There we have it. All right, so let's go back and look at all these. First test was frequency response. Fairly flat. Don't know why there's a difference between left and right channel, but we saw it on some other tests too. And then it starts going up. There's like some little bit of bass boost built in, but it's like way down here at 20 Hertz. And then it drops off. So I'm guessing that there is a high pass filter or like an impersonic filter built into this. And just it's a little bit under damped driving my uh, AP. So yeah, that's a really a better result than what we saw in the other ones possibly. 40 hertz against distortion, it's really bad. Over 1% distortion the whole time from 100 millivolts out to four volts out. By four volts out, we're at 5% distortion. One kilohertz, same test. The left channel yeah, ends up at about 1% by four volts. Constant 5 volts, sweeping down from 20 kilohertz to 20. We're at about 0 0.7, 0 0.8% THD until we get to 60 hertz and we're at 1%. And then we off to the moon to about 6% by 20 hertz. Lots of distortion at low frequencies. Uh, that was with 5 volts input. Here's the same test with 20 volts input. The left channel is hardly ever under 1% distortion. By 40 hertz, you're at 5% THD. And by 30, you're off the chart over 10%. Crosstalk, better on one channel than the other. Again, it's a little bit strange, but the numbers themselves aren't real bad. Signal to noise, those are not great signal to noise numbers. It might, might, might end up a little hiss. FFT, 40 hertz. There's our 40 hertz pure tone there, and then here's all the other Things coming out that shouldn't be and the third harmonic which is 120 is 30 db below it that's a pretty bad result you probably would hear that one kilohertz much better result there's the one kilohertz peak there's 2k 3k 4k and so on over here quite a bit lower 40 to 50 db below the fundamental and we already went through the uh, static distortion measurements at the end. So there we go. That is the Axis AX ADC T2. All right, now I've got this uh, PH2, the best sound, hooked up here. And I've got the gain control on it, or the output level it's called, turned almost all the way down, but you can see the problem here. The two channels are way different amplitude than each other which is why a quality H uh, or a quality LOC like the HLC2 has independent gain controls because stereo gain on the same pot always has error like this sometimes worse than others so I'm going to just turn this thing up until I find a level where they're matched a little better about halfway up now 
All right, that's probably good enough there to run it through the test. All right, let's see what happens. So I'll put levels about halfway up. Um, we are putting in about 10 volts. We got about one volt coming out. So it's about 10 to one. That's what the, the last piece was supposed to be as well. Turn it up a little bit. There we go. It's about 10 to one or so. All right, run it. Let's see what happens. Frequency response. Or you heard step level. all the time. Oof. Oh, I should have popped the scope out so we could see it. That was terrible. All right, one kilohertz, looking a little better. As the level goes up, one channel staying good, one channel's getting sideways. Five volts, step frequency response. Constant five volts, frequency going down, distortion going to the moon. 20 volts, 20 volts in. Distortion was okay until about, well, it was never really that okay. It was okay on one channel, the other channel was terrible the whole time, and then they both went to the moon on low frequency. Okay, that was crosstalk, that was signal noise. 40 hertz signal analysis, 1K signal analysis, and the two THD tests at the end. All right, let's go back and take a look at it. Ignore this pass, pass, pass. They all say that because I didn't put any boundaries in. Okay, so here's the test. I'm gonna go ahead and save this real fast. This was the best sound. All right, let's take a look at these results. Frequency response. Fairly flat. Not as flat as the pack. Starts coming down already by 100 hertz. And by 40 hertz, you're down 1 dB. By 10 hertz, you're off the chart. 20 hertz, you're minus 2.5. All right, 40 hertz distortion. At 100 millivolts out, we're already at 2%. It just kind of stays that way until 1 volt out, and then it starts, it goes off the chart past 10% distortion by two volts. One kilohertz, same test, much better at one kilohertz. One, the, the red channel is, which is channel two, which is the right, stays under about 0.1 the whole time. The left channel is doing its own thing. Five volt frequency against distortion. So we started at 20 kilohertz. And see that left channel again with the extra distortion. Not terrible, but then as we go down lower in frequency, it goes off the chart past 10% distortion. That's with five volts input. 20 volts input, same thing, but much, much worse. Crosstalk, good. Signal to noise, good. FFT, 40 hertz input. Same thing, there's your 40 hertz spike and 120 is just 20 dB behind it. So you're definitely gonna hear that in the rest of these harmonics. One kilohertz, much better, but still a lot of distortion out here. 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, 6K. A 40 hertz distortion number over 10 volts in, right there. Nine and a half percent distortion with 10 volts in. Almost 10% THD. And there's what it looks like. Again, if you're on a little tiny handheld, hopefully you're gonna see that, that it's not a sine wave, but still kind of looks like a sine wave. Not clipped at all. 10% distortion in that right there. No bueno. And same test at one kilohertz. Much lower distortion on the right channel than the left. 
Both of them not terrible. Looks like that on the scope. Pretty much looks like a sine wave. I can tell you, I see a little distortion in there. It's a little too roundy, for lack of a better technical term. But that's why you have distortion analyzers like this. All right, so that's the, uh, the best sound pH2. All righty, we've got the boss. High low level impedance converter model number. That says B65N. All right, let's run it. This one also has independent gain control, so great feature. And I ran uh, one of these constant, like here's the constant 1K test here, and I match the levels with the scope, but I can get them a little bit closer just since it's right here. Let's do that just to show you what I did. So just just these so they're close. It's not gonna really affect the test. They just need to be close. But the point is it has independent level controls and that's an awesome thing. Most of them, or a lot of them don't. All right, let's run this. Was the frequency response. Wait, let's stop it. Let's pop out the scope again. Just for fun, for entertainment purposes. Entertainment purposes. Come on. Okay. Run it. export those results. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Frequency response test. Starting at 20 kilohertz, really flat, all the way down to 40 hertz, we're down by half a dB, and by 20 hertz, we are down one and a half. That's a pretty good result. 40 hertz, step level sweep, lots of distortion at 40 hertz. And that's, again, this is a passive LOC. There's no electronics in it. It's got transformers only, and it's just physics. All of them that are made like this are gonna are gonna be like this at low frequencies. Transformers don't like low frequencies. There's the one kilohertz level sweep. At 100 millivolts out, there's some distortion, 1%. As you go up in, in amplitude, the distortion goes down, gets pretty clean by the time you get to four volts. Here's a five volt NTHD. It's about 1% at all frequencies except for the lowest ones again lots of distortion at low frequency the 20 hertz or, or i'm sorry the 20 volts input result is 
just like the one before it, just worse. Crosstalk was uh, particularly bad. It's of interaction between the two channels. I'm running this test at five kilohertz on all of these, so there's lots of interaction there. Signal noise, 70 dB. Not as good as some, probably better than some others. FFT spectrum, same thing, 40 hertz is our main peak. 120, lots of 120, lots of 160, so lots of harmonics. One kilohertz, much cleaner. One kilohertz uh, fundamental is standing alone, nice and clean. And there's our 2K and 3K fundamentals, really clean actually after, um, on the 1K one, after the uh, third harmonic. 10 volts. 40 hertz, static, meaning just a constant uh, 10 volts out, 40 hertz, what's the distortion? 4.6 and 5.8%. Can you see it? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. You should be able to see that on your little tiny handheld. Don't know if you will. On this big screen, hopefully you can. You can see the... Uh, can see it leaning again it's not clipping one K same test very clean zero zero five zero zero four it's a great result and that is a pretty perfect sine wave and there you have it for the boss LOC all right, next up we've got the kicker. I don't know if this has a model number. I'm sure it does, but I don't know what it is. It is a little guy though. Very tiny, very compact. Pretty cool piece. Okay, the kicker is hooked up and ready to go. Let's um, pop out our scope. And let's run it. This one does not have any gain controls whatsoever on it. Definitely not seeing anything outstandingly uh, bad. All looking pretty good. The low frequency distortion on this one is much less. They may not be using transformers inside, I don't know, because. Uh, I haven't taken it apart. I don't plan on taking it apart, but this looks to have a different different result here. So it might be a resistor network, something like that instead. Okay, let's export this result. Kicker. All right, let's go over it and take a look. First test, frequency response. Yeah, there's no way this has transformers in it. 
super flat. We're only down by half a dB by 10 hertz. 40 hertz distortion. Kind of higher at low levels. We're at over 1%, but that's at 100 millivolts. And as you go up in, in level, it cleans up real nice. And by 4 volts out, we're down to 003. Or 0.03. One kilohertz, same thing. When the signal's really low, there's a little distortion. It cleans up nicely as we turn up the amplitude. Here's the constant five volts input distortion test. Distortion's flat from 20 to 20 at 0 0.3. And when we turn it up to 20 volts, it gets even better. Crosstalk, I got a bad result. I may have to investigate to see what caused that. Signal to noise ratio, minus 70. For a fully passive device, you can only expect so much. 40 hertz, FFT. There's the 40 hertz spike way up here, at almost plus 20, and there is the line noise at 60 hertz that's interesting and you don't really see the harmonic so just much cleaner much less distortion than, than the others there's the one kilohertz and again you don't see the 2k 3k 4k sticking up much cleaner results than some of the others uh here's the constant 10 volts out or, or sorry 10 volts in at 40 hertz 0 0.07 that is great. That's a great result. Very clean. I put the channels out of phase here so that you can really see the individual channels. And 10 volts in at 1K, same thing. 0 0.08 on the THD and a very clean sine wave. Looking good, kicker. All right, now we've got the Skosh LOC25L, I think that says, or maybe 2SL, LOC2SL. Independent gain controls again, so that's a great thing. I've got them adjusted so that the level, the amplitude is the same. You can see they're right on top of each other there. So it's dialed in. Uh, and here we go. Oh wait, stop, stop. Let's remember to pop the scope out this time. Let's pop the scope for entertainment purposes. Something to look at. Okay, run it. There's our 40 hertz sweep over 1% THD the entire time. Typical of these transformer only passive LOCs once again. One kilohertz sweep, much, much cleaner. our constant 5 volt sweep from 20k down to 20 hertz this is our 20 volt version of that same test very low distortion here about 0.1 and then we're off to the moon got some signal noise and crosstalk tests 40 hertz and 1k signal analysis and the static distortion test, which I will again manually do after I after we go over the results. So that was the skosh. Okay, let's take a look at these results. 
Frequency response. Starting off at 20K here. We're pretty flat out to about 60 Hertz. We are down by half a dB there, down by one dB at 30, and by 10 Hertz, we're down three and a half. That might be one of the flatter responses we've seen so far. 40 Hertz distortion versus amplitude. 100 millivolts out, we're over 1%, and by four volts out, we are over 10%. Lots of distortion at low frequencies. One kilohertz, 100 millivolts out, we're at 0.1, and by four volts out, we're down into the 0 0.02, 0 0.03 range. So pretty clean at one kilohertz. Five volts constant, frequency response sweep. Starting at 20 kilohertz, we're at 0.5% THD, and as we go down in frequency, once again, it goes up and up and up to almost 4% uh, by the time we get to 20 hertz. Here's the same test at 20 volts. Low distortion until 300 hertz and starts going up. And by 40 hertz, we're off the charts at over 10%. Crosstalk, not the greatest result. A lot of intermingling of the channels at that frequency, which I'm testing at, which is five kilohertz. Usually the higher frequencies that have the problem. Signal to noise test, 90 dB, not, not too bad. Spectrum, you can see the 40 hertz, pure tone spike there, and then there is all the other things coming out that shouldn't be 80 hertz, 120, 160, 200, and so on. Worst offender, third harmonic distortion right here at 120 hertz. It's 30 decibels below the fundamental. Yes, you would probably hear that. One kilohertz FFT, much better, much cleaner. One kilohertz standing alone over here, and there's 2K and 3K. Four is almost non-existent, and then 5K is there. So the 3K, the largest spike is 70 dB down below the fundamental. You're never going to hear that, and it's a good result. And here is the 10 volts output, or 10 volts input, 40 hertz static distortion test. 2.4 and 2.3 percent THD. Does it look like it? Don't know if you guys can see that. I definitely can see that. You look at these a lot, you get used to seeing it, but they are again tilted to the left at the top. Not clipping whatsoever. Some people might think that's clean, but it's not at all. Two and a half percent distortion. One kilohertz test, way cleaner at one kilohertz, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, pretty perfect sine wave there. There you have it for the skosh. All right, we've got the skosh SLC4 hooked up. I'm only running two channels of it, the uh, front left, front right. I have it on the line out setting we can run it again on another setting like factory app i think it's just gonna turn the gain down uh let's run it see what we got all right there's some scope action okay run it Is not looking good.
Okay, let me save this result. Okay, and let's examine the results here. Frequency response. Pretty poor, that's probably the worst result we've seen so far, so it already is rolling out. Well, it's kind of just rolling down the whole time. But this graph, the way it's designed, it's zeroed at one, k one kilohertz. So looking at that, we've got a little bit of uh, gain on the high end, half a dB, and then we are minus three already by 70 hertz. By 40 hertz, we're at minus five and off my chart. So it's having a really hard time with the low frequencies. 40 hertz distortion versus output. So at 100 millivolts out, we're at 5% THD. And by one volt out, we're off the charts over 10%. And you can't see the traces anymore. So it's just, you just can't do 40 hertz. One kilohertz, we are 0 0.2, 0.3% across the board from 100 millivolts out to 4 volts out. Now, by the way, this one's got like gain adjustments on it. I've got them. Um, about in the middle, the signal's not clipping anywhere in or out, so it's, it's nothing like that. Here is a constant 5-volt input distortion curve. So clean down here at the highest frequencies, and then immediately by 2 kilohertz, the distortion's already starting to increase. Hits 1% distortion around 250 hertz, and then continues to the moon. At 20 volts, it's the same chart, just much worse. Crosstalk, not too bad, 55, 65, that's, that's a decent result. Signal to noise, interesting result. Decent on the left channel, the right channel, uh, not as good. 40 hertz spectrum analysis, you see there's the 40 hertz peak, the pure tone that we're putting into it, and here are the harmonics coming out. 80 hertz. 120 hertz. 120 hertz is only a little over 10 dB different than the, uh, or 10 dB down from the 40 hertz. So that's a ton of harmonic distortion. It would definitely sound very bad at low frequency. One kilohertz. There's the 1K pure tone spike. And there's 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K. Considerable amount of distortion at these uh, harmonics of 1K, but but not nearly as bad as it is at low frequency. And here is the 10 volts, 40 hertz static distortion test. That's with about one volt out. I haven't labeled this 10 volts in, 10 volts in, one volt out. That is bad. It's actually not, it's five volts in right now. This is supposed to be a two. There we go, now it's like the other test. So there's 10 volts in. 10 volts in and uh, yeah, 25% distortion at 40 Hertz. There's the, there's what it looks like. Not clipping, just severely bad. And then the same exact test at 1K. There it is with uh, five volts in, 0.2 and 0.17. And here it is with 10 volts in, 0 0.18, 0 0.2. So again, at one kilohertz, there's a little distortion. It's not too bad, but the 40 hertz thing is, is really bad. So there you go. That's it for the uh, this guy. All right, I'm just gonna do one more of these. This one. Now, I know this isn't fair, and the reason it's not fair is because this one costs more. But let's see why it costs more. Maybe that's the missing part here because people are, are wondering, you know, well, I can just get this one for $49 or $29 or whatever. 
saw this one on Alibaba for $8. Okay, well, this isn't like that. This actually has like electronics inside of it. I know it's small, but we took a lot of, uh, we were very careful to make it small. And that wasn't because there's nothing inside of it. It's not just some resistors inside, or it's not just a couple of little transformers inside. It actually has electronics inside of it. It's got a power supply of its own right here. These are the power supply transformers, one, two. Yes, they're mini. This is a military grade power supply. This is the voltage regulator here. This is the switching controller here, if we can even see that little guy. This is a 30 volt supply. These are Burr Brown low noise quad amps. So there's four amplifiers in here, four in there. And you know, they have gain circuits and filtering and other things to them. It's not just a box with a transformer. So, so there's the, the view of the inside. Okay, and enough of that. So let's, let's actually run this thing. Just gonna keep this video rolling while I put it back together real fast. Anyways, guys, that's why they cost more. There's actually stuff in them. We're not just trying to rip people off. This is actually a really, really good value. You're gonna see right now in the test results. All right, we're all hooked up. Here it is, SMD HLC2. Let's run it. I got the scope popped out this time, I remembered. Frequency response test. 40 hertz. Swept level distortion. We can already see there what you're paying for. That 40 hertz distortion isn't even on the screen, it's so low. It's kind of there on the graph in the beginning and when it's only 100 millivolts out, we're at like 0 0.015 and then after that it goes off the screen, the distortion's so low. At 40 hertz even. Very different when you have an active design like this with active amplifiers in it. There's the one kilohertz swept distortion, same thing, distortions off the graph. I'll just let it run the rest of the way and then I'll go over the results. Okay, so let's save that result. HLC2. All right, let's go over the results. So, first test frequency response. You can see it's almost ruler flat all the way across 20 to, 20 to 10, 20K all the way down to 10 hertz. From 20 to 20, it is flat. By 10 hertz, you're down maybe negative 0.3. 40 hertz distortion sweep from 100 millivolts out up to 4 volts out. When the signal's small, there's only 100 millivolts coming out, you can see a little distortion here, 0.015. After that, it gets so low, it's off my graph. 1 kilohertz, same exact result. Constant 5 volts input. Distortion sweep, we're at about 003 all the way across with 20 volts in. Now there's more signal to work with. 
you see a little uh, you see it on the graph here at 20 kilohertz it's like 001 and after that so low it's off the screen again crosstalk 62 and 68 db between the channels so it's a good result signal to noise ratio 106 and 107 db this thing is quiet FFT spectrum, there's our 40 hertz pure tone in, and our harmonics are way down here at minus 90, minus 100, minus 90 dB. You're not hearing that stuff. You're going to get a pure 40 hertz sound out of it. 1 kilohertz, same thing. 1 kilohertz tone way up here all by itself, and the harmonics are way down here at minus 90, minus 100. Uh, what else we have here? 10 volts. 10 volts output, oh, this is the static distortion test. So here's 10 volts output with a 40 hertz sign. Or I'm sorry, 10 volts input, 40 hertz sign. 0 0.001. That's 100 times less distortion than 0 0.1. I mean, it doesn't get any cleaner. That's as perfect of a sine wave as you're ever going to see right there. Good stuff. And then the same exact test, but at one kilohertz. Oops, right here. 0 0.001. There you have it. The SMD HLC2 and why it is more expensive. And why it's not fair to compare it against the others that we saw today.